Hello and welcome to my review of MotoGP 15 which is made by Milestone MotoGP 15 is similar to Ride and MotoGP 14 which is both also made by Milestone of course with the mechanics from Ride and the theme from MotoGP 14 MotoGP 15 is also on Xbox One the 360, PS3 and PS4 as well as the PC version which I am going to be reviewing today. Alright here we are. So uh, let's begin with uh, seeing some of the features of this game and the first thing we'll take a look at is uh, rider customization. Okay. So MotoGP 15 has a rider customization system just like MotoGP 14 and Ride, although it is not exactly as uh, robust as Ride, even though Ride itself is pretty garbage when it comes to the rider customization. So you have a riding license, which is basically the basic uh, information of your rider. So the thing that is different this time is that even though there are some female portraits like the one you see over here uh, all the rider models in MotoGP 15 are going to be exclusively male there are no female models for uh, riders in MotoGP 15 and when the announcer refers to your rider he will always refer you exclusively as a male so this is one of the uh, downgrades from Ride. Rider gear, there is uh, a choice of different helmets, boots, gloves, and then you have your nickname and the style of the riding and the color of the riding which goes onto the butt of your tracksuit. Now don't think that the tracksuit is not customizable, it essentially is but we'll cover that later. So, the riding style is also another downgrade from the customization that uh, players of ride uh, are used to. You no longer have individual sliders for all the uh, riding position, the riding styles, the angle of the elbow, angle of the body, how much lean, and so on and so forth. Now you are stuck with uh, the same few textbook riding styles. That you, that you usually get from the previous MotoGP 14 and 13. Now we'll take a look at some of the game modes that uh, MotoGP 15 is going to offer. Basically, Instant Race uh, is a basically random. So when you click Instant Race, it's going to bring you into a a random selection of uh, track, weather conditions, uh, rider and bike. Grand Prix is basically your single single uh, instant action where you select your bike, your track on a single race. Championship is basically Grand Prix but with 16 stages that you customize yourself. And then the MotoGP career is where all the action takes place. It is basically the campaign of the game. And I'll be covering that later. Time attack, no, no need to expouse on it. It's basically um, you trying to beat a set record time with a particular machine. So there are a category called special events which is going to be possibly where all the DLC will end up in if you buy DLC or you bought the season pass there is right now beat the time which is basically um, particular events where you pick a certain uh, uh, event and this event is going to have a certain bike and a certain uh, set of conditions to fulfill Real events from 2014 which is basically uh, little scenarios where you play as a particular rider trying to achieve a certain result. And two stroke events is basically fictional events uh, 
that you are a particular rider achieving a particular result using uh, those classic two-stroke MotoGP bikes. Then you have multiplayer. So multiplayer is split between online and split screen. Uh, of course, the split screen is where it's gonna be at. There's a two-player split screen, and this is the probably the best multiplayer option. Online is a bit more finicky uh, right now. I feel that it could improve a bit better, but uh, based on Milestone's uh, track record, I wouldn't bet on online mode being any more stable than it is. Okay, so here we are. We are at the MotoGP career section of the game. So basically, this is your main menu for the campaign. Over here, on this laptop, you have the touchscreen where you are going to view the news and updates, basically some uh, tidbit uh, background text for you to go. And then there are the rider standings, which is basically to keep track of uh, your own score across the season. Then this is your team menu, no, nothing special, and basically all the uh, records that you have over the particular season. So this is private team, something that is new to MotoGP 15 when you sign on with a sponsor that allows you to create your own private team, you unlock this particular menu. I do not recommend that you sign on with a private team too early uh, as private teams require you to invest in your own bike uh, as well as the upgrading of that particular bike and that requires uh, credits that you have to slowly earn across the races so if you sign with an already established team you are going to be able to ride with a more competitive machine that is already set up for you and earn credits better that way but when you have achieved a certain amount of credits of course go ahead and create a private team as uh, this is where you're going to achieve the best optimization of your machine so over here you have your private team customization menu, you have your team name, you have your team logos which isn't a lot actually. So it's just a few preset logos and then there are the bikes that you can choose from depending on the class you are riding in. All these bikes require credits to unlock if you are not already in a pre-made team that has these bikes on offer. So it isn't exactly a lot but that's what MotoGP is anyway there's only a select few of manufacturers that are offering a machine in the series so the bikes are going to be customized in a very limited fashion okay there is no um, what do you call that you there's no decaling okay the decals are dependent on your sponsor so of course if you are joining a pre-made sponsor the decals are a lot nicer because pre-made teams have several sponsors whereas if you're in a private team you only have one sponsor so you only have one decal which is like my bike right now one dewalt so there are only a choice of two different liveries per bike and they usually do not vary by much and then you get to choose the three main colors of your bike's body as well as the wheel and no other uh, cosmetic customizations anymore but the these three colors affect your own tracksuit so that's where I did mention that tracksuit customization does appear just that in a certain limited manner over here you have your bedroom oh, down here you can uh, customize your rider the same as you can in the menu okay right here is the same riding gear as you can see the tracksuit follows the same uh, color scheme as my uh, customized bike which is black red black 
and then back to the office you have the multimedia which is basically all the pictures of uh, MotoGP 15 over the course of the real life series which you can unlock as you progress through the game and over here you have your calendar the calendar is basically going to bring you to the next race of the season so here we are at the paddocks of the particular race that we are going to be in so you've got the session information which is basically uh, the the information like the wind speed, the weather and so on and so forth and then you have your engineer you can have him set the bike up for you or you can do it yourself but usually it is a lot better if you set it up by yourself because uh, you have more control of the settings and it isn't that difficult to understand what each individual settings do And then this button brings you to the track itself. So this is uh, something that is going to be different if you are playing Mode GP15, which is bike development. Okay, bike development over here you have the choice to spend data bags to upgrade your particular bike if you are in a private team. If you're not in a private team, then of course this option is locked away for you. So you can upgrade your chassis, your suspension, your brakes as well as the engine. And each time you level up, you spend enough data packs to level up the particular component, you are going to get improved performance on that part of the bike. Uh, data packs themselves are going to be earned over the course of the MotoGP career as you complete each individual race the first lap will always award you one data pack whereas if you are going to be playing in a test round which is uh, categorized by T when you are going through the calendar menu those award you three data packs Alright, and now on to the critique. For graphics, I would say the tracks and the bikes are bland and flat, uh, as well as the textures for riders are sort of rough. However, uh, rain is beautifully done and brings life to an otherwise bland look, and AI riders will sometimes remove their visor tear-offs. Falls and recover animations are realistically done, MotoGP 15 is a lot more optimized than Ride and runs a lot more smoother even with background programs uh, making at least the PC version more playable on older machines. As for the audio, the bikes sound perfect and the voice acting of the announcers before and after the race sessions are pretty convincing. However, there is a lack of background sounds during an actual race to give it ambience uh, when reviewing a replay, the sound is chopped up and cuts out from time to time, even within the same camera shot. So that is a huge problem for the audio section. As for gameplay, gameplay is solid with uh, smooth and responsive controls. Rider 8 and the rewind system help new players to learn the ropes easily and turning them off also gives experienced riders a worthy challenge. Physics are now modeled a lot better than right, and it is a lot easier to fall when leaning too far, uh, breaking in a turn, and catching air when you go over a bump. However, AI is still predictable and dumb in some ways. They will always pick the same line on the track, they will not attempt to avoid a collision if another rider is occupying the same spot on their line and they will always be at the nearly same spot and at the nearly the same time like clockwork. So as for content that MotoGP 15 gives you, uh, due to the nature of the game, you get a grand total of only 18 tracks and 19 bikes for the base career mode. Customization is uh, sorely lacking. 
the gear you get to unlock over the course of the game tantamounts to mere palette changes and customizing your team's bike is limited to just a free color paint job with no decaling available for you to choose. However, the stable of bikes do get expanded when you play the Grand Prix or special events which bring in machines used in MotoGP 14 as well as several classic two-stroke bikes. And speaking of special events, if anyone gets bored of the standard career mode races, special events introduce extra objectives for you to complete as well. For multiplayer, you have choice between split screen and online play. Split screen is basically a two-player available to you where you can play with a friend in your living room in a race and this is obviously the better of the two multiplayer modes uh, because online play is extremely unstable and dodgy right now connecting from places like Southeast Asia or Oceania to another player in the US for example leads to a horrible experience as it is all based on peer-to-peer -peer connections and it is extremely common to sometimes drop out suddenly from a match because of a bad connection so my final verdict on this game is I would give it a 6 out of 10 because at its heart it is a great game however the presentation is clearly lacking and the value is not there for the $50 that it is selling for and I would advise to avoid purchasing the special edition or any season pass as knowing Milestone's track record the season pass would have only afforded you the DLC that was released at launch and they were left the game to rot after release just like they did with Ride. And while it is a great game to buy if you have the cash to spare, otherwise just share a single copy amongst your friends and family or rent one uh, for, a few, for a few days until you finish the game. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll answer them as much as I can.